So we've seen it's useful to consider the idea that uh, of, of operators when, who, when raised to a certain power, give you zero. So let's formalize this concept. This is the idea of a nilpotent operator. So just the word itself, nil means zero, and potent means power. So nilpotent means that if you raise it to some power, you get zero. So T is a nilpotent operator if and only if when you raise it to some power, you get zero. Okay, and so examples of this, well, the classic example that, that it was introduced a while back and has kind of been dogging your heels all the way along is this one that moves y to the first component and, and replaces it by zero. So this is a nilpotent operator on uh, F2. Um, and that's because if, if you square it, then what happens? Well, the y coordinate comes over and zeroes out the first one. And then this is replaced by zero, even though it already is zero. So now both coordinates are equal to zero. So that'll flatline any vector in F2. Um, another nilpotent operator you've been familiar with for a long time is the derivative. If you're applying it to polynomials. So the uh, D is nilpotent on the polynomials of degree M or less. Um, since if you apply it m plus 1 times, that'll be enough to kill any um, polynomial of degree m or less. And then the one that we've been looking at in this chapter is if we take t minus lambda i and we restrict it to the generalized lambda eigenspace, then this is nilpotent basically by the definition of g lambda. All right, so now we have a uh, quick result, and that is uh, 818. So if we have a nilpotent operator n, Then, um, in terms of like how many uh, times do you have to iterate this operator in order to get the zero one, well, the dimension of the vector space will always do it. So if we take n and we raise it to the power dim v, that will always give us a zero. And that's probably no shock considering the other results of this section that we've seen so far. So let's see, for the proof, um, since n is oops, nilpotent, um, for any v, there is some non-negative integer k such that n to the k applied to v gives you 0. And so this means that every element of V is a generalized zero eigenvector. Okay, and so then uh, if we look at 811, Uh, raising it to the power dim v is enough to guarantee that you get to zero. And so by, by sufficient here, I, I mean that raising it to the dim v power gets you zero. All right. 